Today the church holds up for us this beautiful feast of the most holy body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the feast of Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. So we get this beautiful gospel recounts that institution narrative where Jesus himself gave us this incredible gift of his body, his blood, his soul and divinity to his disciples at that that Last Supper, the first Mass ever celebrated. If you've been following um, uh, some of the news, or at least the Catholic news, I don't know if it made the regular news, but on Monday of last week, we had the big Eucharistic procession that came through the Twin Cities. So it's a part of the national Eucharistic revival of just bringing our hearts, our gaze back to the central truth of our faith that contained in the Holy Eucharist is the wealth of all spiritual grace for us as Catholics. It's his, his full presence, the gift that's most intimate that he gives to us. So on Monday, the uh, procession went from the St. Paul Seminary all the way down Summit Avenue to the, to the cathedral. And there was over 7,000 people a part of this procession. And I know some of you here were able to go and to be a part of that. But just an incredible witness of the truth of Jesus' full presence himself there in his entirety in the Holy Eucharist. And immediately my heart just kind of went to some of those lines from the Gospel of John where Jesus says, uh, when the Son of Man is lifted up, he will draw all people to himself. So when the the monstrance in this Eucharistic procession, when the sacred host, the Blessed Sacrament was held high, there were 7,000 people processing along with Jesus from the St. Paul Seminary, the four or five miles all the way down to to the cathedral. That this is really the source and the summit of all of our faith, of all of our Christian life. All the graces flow from that. So, so encouraging. And I wasn't able to be there myself, but I heard from a lot of my brother priests who were able to be there just how encouraging. And you could just feel the Lord, the Spirit's presence there. And obviously, Jesus himself leading this leading the charge down, down the way. But it made me reflect in just a sober way, I suppose, of uh, this incredible gift of the Eucharist. And myself as a priest, I get the chance to celebrate Mass every single day to come in contact with this source of grace, God himself. And I just thought, and it was moved by the Spirit, so it was, it was gentle, <laughs> but I was like, well, if this is the source of all grace and holiness, uh, why don't I feel it more sometimes? <laughs> or why aren't I further along in my spiritual journey? Like every day I'm, I'm, I'm celebrating Mass, I'm receiving from this font of life, this font of holiness. And I came across a quote from St. Faustina where she says, uh, Jesus says that every person I come to in Holy Communion, I have my arms full of so many graces, so many graces that I just want to pour out upon a person. But some people don't want to receive it, is what Jesus said to Faustina. And I just thought, huh, sometimes that's me. (laughs) Unbeknownst to me, I maybe don't prepare well for this source and summit of our Christian faith. I might be distracted, might not be able to enter into the holy mysteries. And so we still receive Jesus himself, but maybe not the fullest of what he wants to give us. So not to, this is preaching to myself, my own heart, uh, but may be helpful for all of us. The witness of the saints, they really hold up three beautiful things for us to be reminded of to how to let the Eucharist really be the source and summit of our faith and how to actually receive when Jesus comes to us in Holy Communion with his arms full of grace. How do we actually receive all those graces and not let some of them slip by. So the saints, they speak about three little acts that can be so important for us. So the first is just active faith. So we think, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, all of us here have faith. We wouldn't be here if we didn't. But we can actually make acts of faith uh, that can just dispose us more to the gift that is coming. 
the source and summit, Christ himself. So it could look as simple as when we come to Mass, Lord, here I am, and I believe there you are. And I, I make an act of faith that you're going to truly come here to me. Open up my heart. So it's something that's heartfelt. It's a prayer of faith, but it brings us into this mode of I'm claiming faith here. Lord, I make an act of faith that you're present here. I might not feel you. I might be stressed or anxious or worked up, but I'm going to make an act of faith that you're here and you want to give yourself to me. So the saints say that this little act of faith can be so, so powerful for us. Secondly, they speak about uh, the matter of our heart that the Lord always gives, but he can only give as much as our heart is open to and able to receive. And it comes from if we have uh, perhaps sins that we haven't repented of or we haven't uh, really just handed over to the Lord, that those can be obstacles to receive more fully his divine life. So they might be big things or little things, but anything that maybe we haven't repented of or just said, Lord, I'm sorry, I, I want to bring this to you. If we need to go to confession, we go to confession, that those can actually, they can just be little obstacles to receive his armful of grace that he comes to, comes to us with and wants to give us. So faith, repentance, and every time we celebrate Mass, we begin, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. So the gift of actually, okay, Lord, I need to repent. And we have confessions every single day of the week here, but, but more than going to confession every day, we say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need to repent and ask for forgiveness for those ways in which I've harmed him, harmed others. And lastly, the third is uh, just desire. That the more we desire the Lord, the more we're actually able to receive from the Lord. So if we say, Lord, I actually not sure how much I desire you. That's an honest prayer, but I want to desire you more. And then he's able to really work in us and, and well up our fervor, our desire. So the good news is all three of these things are not us just doing it alone. It's God who begins, ends, and is present in all of those stages. So for us to actually make an act of faith, to have repentance, to have desire, to have fervor in our heart, it's all because He desires all people to be saved, to come to Him. He said Himself, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to Myself. So it's really, the focus is on Him, that He's got this drawing motion. He wants to draw us in again and again and again. And we get discouraged, we get turned around on the way. He says, that's okay, come to me, come to me. But for me, that was encouraging just to say, okay, well, maybe three little things, act of faith, act of repentance, act of desire, to really dispose myself to the incredible armful of graces that he has for each one of us in the Holy Eucharist. And we have that here today to celebrate Mass, to be able to receive from that. Last point, just to encourage, now that we're getting into summer here, could be a great opportunity just to say, well, maybe I could go to a daily Mass or two throughout the, the summer weeks. There's something so important and beautiful about a daily Mass that can help us in our devotion to the Eucharist. Sunday Mass is so important for us all to be here together, but for daily Mass, it's only half an hour, there's no music, and it just is, we focus on, oh yeah, we're all here for the gift, for Jesus himself. We need him. He's our daily bread. It can be a beautiful, concrete way just to grow in our Eucharistic faith, our Eucharistic devotion here in these summer months. Faith, repentance, desire, all of these begin in Him and let Him just well that up within us so we can be disposed to receive the incredible gift of His body and blood here today.